Hello, uh, my name is Nathan Jepson. I'm a development editor at O'Reilly Media, and I'm here with Tom Stewart, author of Understanding Computation, one of our upcoming books that we're very excited about. Hello, Tom. Hi, how are you doing? Very good, very good. Uh, thanks good. for joining me today. And uh, I want to, uh, to, to discuss your book and, and some of the really wide topics that it covers. Um, Understanding Computation is a, is a real open title and uh, it really presents, um, you know, some very exciting uh, information for, for readers from a variety of walks. Uh, programmers come from a lot of walks of life. Uh, some are classically trained virtuosos and, you know, some are people that have learned by doing and on the job. Um, and, you know, along the way, they may have missed out on some of these uh, classical concepts of computational theory and some of the things that are easy to get by when we're, uh, you know, trying to do the job and do it quickly. Um, and this book, you know, just presents in a very unique manner a variety of concepts that are, you know, uh, more classical computational theory. So, um, you know, um, I'd like to talk about where these ideas came from. Where did this book come from? Okay. Well, um, I had the, the idea for this book um, probably about 10 years ago now when I was, uh, when I was a grad student. Um, and I was trying to do research into uh, computer programming and uh, programming languages and theory and, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, and I guess two things happened as part of that process that kind of came together in my mind to make me want to do this as a book. Um, the first one of those things is that I was, from a young age, I was a self-taught computer programmer um, and I'd done um, a mathematics degree as an undergraduate. So um, to begin as a computer science grad student, I had to do a lot of reading and I had to get up to speed on a lot of the kind of more formal um, theory and pieces of computer science that I hadn't previously known about. Um, and I found that very difficult. It was a really hard experience because there were lots of ideas that seemed really relevant and really fascinating and I really wanted to learn them and understand them, but they were all um, wrapped up in a lot of uh, a lot of pre-existing theory. They assumed that you had a lot of discrete mathematics and that you understood a lot of the existing computer science stuff, which I had never done as an undergraduate because I'd done mathematics. So I found that quite hard and I had to put a lot of work in and kind of sweat a lot to get right to the middle and get these kind of juicy pieces of insight out of, out of the center. So I eventually, I ultimately found that very rewarding, but the process of getting there was, was really hard work. Um, and the second thing that happened when I was a grad student is that I got a chance to spend a lot of time teaching. I spent a lot of, um, a lot of time teaching undergraduates and lecturing and stuff like that. Um, and that was really the first time that I'd spent any significant amount of time explaining things to people, but I found that to be itself a really rewarding and interesting process because in order to explain stuff to people you first have to well firstly you have to understand it yourself so you have to go off you have to make sure that you've learned everything and you've got kind of a, a really good overview of the whole subject whatever it is that you're trying to teach and then you have to having read everything that there is to read you have to then assemble your own intuitive understanding of the thing inside your own head and then once you've done that you can then do this step which is to go and talk to a student or a bunch of students and try to uh, by remote control, kind of reconstruct that understanding in their own, in their minds. Um, and I found that really interesting, and, and it's kind of a cliche that to, un to understand something you have to teach it to someone, but I think that that's why, because to, to, to have your own picture in your mind of how something works, and then to be able to re recreate that in someone else's head, you really have to understand how one thing leads to another and how all these ideas fit together. So the combination of those two experiences made me feel like I wanted to um, you know, that I wanted to try and find a way to do this, and, and I, I think at that time thought about writing a book, and, and it never really happened, and it just kind of stewed in the back of my head, but I thought maybe I can, all of this stuff that I have learned that I think is genuinely fun and interesting, but which took me a lot of effort to get around to, maybe I could do this, maybe I could um, find a way to explain this to, you know, some, in a friendly way, to someone who I might, you know, meet socially who is interested in this kind of stuff, so not in a formal setting, but just um, by being a little bit sensitive to the kinds of things that people do and don't already understand if they're self-taught programmers, and hopefully, um, you know, be able to convey a little bit of the uh, the excitement and fun that I think is in that theory without necessarily having to force people to slog through all of the kind of mathematical and theoretical prerequisites. Yeah, and I mean that's uh, that's a, a, a large part of, of what the book deals with. I mean, you know, it, we 
the book gets into the idea of the meaning of programs. And, yeah. you know, one of the very fascinating uh, sections in there and one of the fascinating topics. And, you know, we're always confronted with that. We have, as a programmer, we have a variety of structures and a variety of algorithms at our fingertips, and those are the tools. And the decision-making process to determine which is the best program to use, which is the best algorithm, the best structure to use, we just take it for granted. We don't really understand the meaning of why uh, something does the job, but the idea that it does do the job. And we just take it for granted, we plug in the piece, and we let it do its thing. And, and the book very interestingly um, gets into the meaning of programs, and that seems to be a very important part of teaching this computational theory for you. Yeah, that's right. I mean, really, the, one of the big themes of the book, I suppose, is what, well, basically, what is computation? Like, what does it mean for something to be a computer? And then once you've got a computer, what does it mean for it to do a computation? And so, um, really, the very first thing that I need to talk about in the book is um, what does it mean to for, for a computer to run a program um, when you sit down and write a program for a computer? All you're doing is just putting one character after another. You know, as far as the computer's concerned, if it's just a text file, you could be writing a novel or you could be writing a, a recipe. And so the trying to draw out that connection between the individual letters and numbers and characters that you type into a file and then the slightly more abstract uh, you know, significance of those symbols and how, how those symbols are grouped together to make words and how the words are grouped together to make effectively sentences at the level of the computer program and then how we can, how we can establish a connection between the purely syntactic aspect of a computer program and the, as, as I say in the book, you know, the semantics of what it means when you've written that program is something that is really fundamental and, and all the way through the book I need to keep coming back to that idea in order to talk about as I walk through lots of different kind of um, lots of small uh, models of computing going from these very simple models of computing devices up to more and more sophisticated ones and at each point I need to keep stopping and saying well this thing that we've done or this process that we're looking at um, you can see what it does but we need to look up what the meaning of that process is, and, and ultimately it's only by having a sense of what the meaning of what a computer does is that you can get any useful work out of it. You just have a machine that is sitting in a room and kind of lights are blinking on and off and the box is getting warm, but you don't have any kind of framework for translating you know, effectively the outputs of that machine to something that has a significance to you, then it might as well not be doing anything. It's only, it's only by having this ability to, in some way, relate the action of some system in the world back to your own understanding of whatever the problem is that you're trying to solve, that you can, you can get work done. And, and a lot of the cleverest algorithms, um, it's really quite hard to see why they do what they do. I mean, there are, there are lots of algorithms out there which just seem like magic. When you look at them, perhaps they're very short or perhaps they're very long and complicated. But in either case, um, it's sometimes hard to see why such and such an algorithm gives you the output the outcome that you want. And it's only by sitting down and taking the um, quite abstract idea of an algorithm and thinking about what the meaning of the operations in that algorithm are and what effect those operations have on your understanding of what the output of that algorithm is going to be, that you can really get a good understanding of firstly whether that algorithm does what it's supposed to do and secondly whether it does it efficiently or correctly and whether there's any way that you can improve it and all, all that kind of stuff. So I do think it's really important um, at all levels of, even if you're just, you know, building web apps every day or whatever it is, to have some kind of intuition for the difference between, you know, the, the, the concrete, the syntax part of programming and then the, the slightly sort of more ideal, higher level semantic aspect of it and how those two things are connected together and how you can use that connection to get your job done. Yeah, and one of the tools uh, that, that you seem to use to help, to help with the meaning uh, is is this section on programming with nothing uh, uh, qu quite a uh, an interesting concept of stripping your tools away uh, removing all of those all of those uh, structures that you've uh, taken for granted would always be there for you and yeah. and stripping it down to the bare bones and showing that you can still do just about any job yeah so I mean I the, the, the reason why I uh, I mean that. I think. Uh, I mean, some people have seen that material before, and it's um, some people find it really difficult. 
Um, it is it is hard to write a program in a language that's had all of the features removed from it, and I, I don't try to pretend that this is how we should actually write computer programs. But the the point of that programming with nothing material that I wanted to get across is that I suppose ultimately I wanted to make people think about the differences between programming languages. It's very easy to, um, especially in this day and age, it's very easy to get you know stuck into one particular programming language. You know, I'm a a Ruby programmer or a Python programmer or a Perl or a Java programmer, and you, you, you develop a very kind of narrow mindset in terms of um, how programming languages work and what's possible with them and what the best way to do things is. Um, and so one of the, I suppose, the subtext of that chapter that I want to try and get across is um, to sort of communicate the idea that all programming languages, all, all, all proper programming languages, all ones that allow you to do you know, useful work, um, have effectively the same set of capabilities. Even if you, even with a language like Ruby, even if you take away all of the features that Ruby has, all of the object-oriented features and all of the functional programming features, and you just boil it down to, in that case, making a, a, a lambda or a prop and calling it, um, then you can reconstruct all of the stuff that you've taken away. And then, and so by analogy, you can do that with any other program as well. So I wanted to, what I hope to show with that section is, is ultimately, well, two things. Firstly, it's fun and and interesting, but it's even possible to do this. It may not be obvious that you can do, you know, that you can represent things like numbers and strings and, and arrays and all of those kind of data structures without actually using those data structures. So, so it's it's a curiosity. But the, the second thing is to show, in a, in a slightly more oblique way, that the reason why we choose different program languages is because of the degree of expressiveness that they give us for the specific kinds of problems that we're trying to solve. Because ultimately, it doesn't matter which program language. They're all, they can all do the same set of things. In any programming language, you can do something like programming with nothing and, and rebuild all of your basic tools from scratch using just the ability to call code inside a language. But you don't want to do that. And the reason why you choose one language over another is because you might find that the language that you're using has more sense, has a greater sensitivity to the kind of problems that you want to solve with it or the way that you want to express your solutions to those problems. Yeah, so the, that's very interesting, and and the examples uh, in 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 the book are of course written in Ruby. So as we as we peel away, uh, you know, all those layers of functionality, uh, we, we begin to feel that we're on a tightrope of programming. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I no longer have a safety net. Um, yeah. But it, you know, really a, a superb uh, presentation of material in the book, and uh, you know, find it very interesting for. A uh, variety of, of programmers from from you know people who who uh, you know maybe have some classical training, um, maybe are those who kind of jumped into the workforce with you know only you know the minimum of of, of training uh, possible. Yeah. Um, so uh, thank you very much, Tom, and uh, I appreciate you taking your time out and uh, discussing the book and the topics with me. Um, so once again, uh, that has been this has been uh, a discussion with Tom Stewart, author of Understanding Computation, uh, that will be coming out uh, from O'Reilly Media in the next few months. And uh, we look very we look forward very much to uh, to your next book and uh, to uh, delving more into these kind of topics. Um, thank you very much again, Tom. <laughs>